Hello everyone, welcome back to part 4 of my Field of Glory 2 Beginner's Guide. Uh, in this segment we are still looking at POA or Points of Advantage uh, in units, except this time we're going to be looking at it from a unit capability standpoint. These are the keywords that you might see on the unit cards such as Impact Foot, uh, Light Spear, Offensive Spear, Lancers, etc. These keywords are the primary driver in terms of unit behavior because they define where most of the POA comes from. Um, POAs of course can be gained through other means. Uh, you've seen examples before where a unit is for example superior or elite and gets you know, POA bonuses. Um, armor also affects POA in melee combat. but. In terms of how a unit behaves, what, what a unit's identity is in the game, it is rooted firmly in unit capabilities. And we're going to explore the different types of keywords available, um, and, and hopefully you'll understand that despite the fact that uh, there are a ton of units in, the, in, in this game, um, you can really sort of place them into groups, uh, maybe four, five, six, seven different groups of units and their behavior is roughly the same so if you understand how uh, a Roman Legion unit works you should really understand how Spanish Gadari work or how warbands work with respect to how they respond in combat against a, a wide variety of opponents. Before we move on to that though um, I do need to clean up one section on, on terrain and cohesion um, Someone informed me that I neglected uh, to do severely disordered and fragmented status, uh, as well as uphill downhill um, combat. So let's get into that. Okay, so we're going to quickly go over uh, terrain height. Um, terrain height in this game is um, is based on arbitrary units of uh, in increments of 25. So you'll find 25 here, 50. 100, um, etc. Anytime a unit is fighting another unit and it has a height advantage, uh, it gets an uphill bonus. So we have right now Armored Noble Lancers. We can see that their height is 150. You can see that on the fourth line in this combat window. Height of 150. We're facing off against a regular foot that's on height zero. This is all open ground. If there's no height, uh, height modifier there, it means it's uh, ground level. Uh, of zero and we can go back to the window and we can see that uh, in our POA uh, summation we have a line that says uphill plus 100 uh, and that's pretty easy to understand I think um, 100 you get 100 uphill bonus if the height differential is 100 or higher and once again height increments only occur in, in, in increments of 25 if say there was an enemy unit in front of this cavalry unit here, uh, this cavalry unit has a height that has a, is on a height 25 piece of terrain. Say it was fighting something on open ground down here, which doesn't have a height. Because it's uphill, it still gains a POA bonus. But because the height differential in this case is 25 less than 100, uh, units like this get a 25 uh, POA bonus to its combat score. To its POA uh, list of POA modifiers. Um, hopefully, from the from the second video and the third video, you should understand what uh, POAs of 125 do for you. Um, there, the 25 is it's it's not a small number, uh, but it's not game changing. Uh, 100 points of advantage bonus definitely is so. Holding a hill is very beneficial for you to, um, it allows basically inferior units to hold off potentially some really tough stuff. Um, in terms of severely disordered, severely disordered comes from things like difficult slope, woods, marshes. Uh, is there a marsh in this game? Yeah, there's marshes here. And certain types of streams, uh, there's no streams on this map. But certain types of streams, if you mouse over the stream, it'll tell you whether it's going to cause severe disorder or, or not. Severe disorder is a massive penalty. Uh, if we look at our Invitation Legions uh, right here, um, they are they are heavy foot on difficult slope. 
and it severely disorders them and they carry a 45 percent penalty and just take a look at the morale disorder modifier line we're severely disordered at 45 percent the irregular foot we're fighting is moderately disordered at 22 percent and despite the fact we have like this massive 127 poa bonus uh our win percent is eight our win percent is eight um it's obviously terrible um simply put don't put yourself in a position where you're going to be severely disrupted um it doesn't do you any good um and if you throw your best units in there for whatever reason you're just you're wasting their potential it's worth noting though that uh, light units don't don't ever suffer disorder uh, it seems so um surprisingly sometimes uh, you, you can especially in streams i had i had a, I had a player uh, uh, not a non-official tournament um uh, where um we had a stream cutting across the entire map and I had great success sticking light foot in there. Um, light foot such as skirmisher slingers and, 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 and uh, light javelin men. And uh, they annoyed my opponent to no end who, who ended up trying to charge heavy foot to go after the, the light foot. Um, and it, it, it was a total waste of time for him. So basically don't put uh, uh, units into severe disorder. It just doesn't help you at all. Fragmented carries the <clears throat> sorry. Fragmented carries the same negative forty-five uh, percent penalty as severely disordered does. Uh, as you can see right here, going back to my noble lancers, they're fighting um, irregular foot who are currently dis uh, sorry not disordered. Uh, they're fragmented, and once again, that's a cohesion state. We talked about that in the first video. Um, forty-five percent, as we just discussed, is a massive, massive penalty. Um, so don't expect even the most elite units uh, to be able to do much. In fact, fragmented units can, are not allowed to attack. Uh, that's that's another thing. Fragmented units, you cannot charge with a fragmented unit. Um, and we talked about this in video one. Fragmented units, if they get charged, have to pass a cohesion check just to stick around and fight. But even if they do stick around and fight, um, your odds of winning are absolutely zero. The only thing you really hope for is uh, to do well on the com on the combat roll and do like a hold, for example, uh, like a, like a draw. Um, obviously, unlike severely disordered, like unlike terrain penalties, this is not something you have control over. Um, I mean, throughout the course of a battle, I'm sure one or two of your units are going to get fragmented. There's nothing you can do. Um, the only thing to note about this is that. You shouldn't expect them to win any more combat rounds and uh, if that's an important section of your battle line you better get help and uh, better get it quick okay and this uh, now that we've covered that we can move on to the main part of uh, part four of this video which is uh, talking about POA differentials be uh, between different unit capabilities the reason why we why I'm going over this is because parts two and three should give you a solid understanding in terms of what POA differentials mean on different terrains uh, for different unit types and how combat combat strength modifiers affect your win, draw, and loss chance on a variety of situations. So the final piece of the puzzle would be to understand how what the baseline POA differentials are between these various units because of all the units in the game they can really be grouped into just a few categories here there are some differences in terms of how how good they are or how they behave when you take a look at things like unit quality a superior unit or an elite unit will obviously perform better than a, an average unit on the account that these units get a POA boost based on the unit quality. Um, but assuming, and the same thing goes for armor, but assuming we're talking about rough equivalence, um, an average impact foot unit versus an average spearman unit versus an average pike unit, uh, these relationships should more or less hold true um, because the POAs uh, that they get uh, should all roughly be the same, uh, given that uh, unit, the unit capability line is the uh, primary driver for unit behavior and how, and how a unit gains a lot of its POA. 
Uh, the first one, uh, the first unit we're gonna go, uh, not unit. The first keyword we are going to go over is impact foot. Impact foot is always paired with a swordsman ability. This is as of Immortal, uh, Immortal Fires 1.16, uh, I believe it is. Um, there haven't been any impact units, uh, impact foot units, uh, created that don't have the swordsman keyword backing them up for melee. Impact foot versus spearman. Uh, on impact is going to be a plus 100 POA advantage for the impact foot in melee assuming the spearmen did not uh, are not disrupted uh, sorry are not uh, that's right disrupted or fragmented um, the the impact foot uh, because they use swordsmen for melee will be at a minus 50 POA disadvantage a small but um, noteworthy uh, noteworthy deficiency so the practical Practical implications is that Impact Foot, um, despite the fact that they're, they're, they're favorites to win on Impact Round, um, if they don't win, uh, if they don't win Impact, they typically will, will the Spearman will typically grind them out during uh, prolonged melee combat. Impact Foot versus Pikes is going to be equal um, on Impact. Both sides will bring 200 POA to the table. Um, Assuming the pikes are in uh, open ground and are not disrupted and uh, disrupted or disordered, that's because uh, unlike Impact Foot, which derives it, all of its 200 POA off of a single keyword, uh, pikes need uh, derive their 200 uh, POA from two separate keywords: the pike keyword and the deep pike keyword. Uh, deep pike doesn't work on that if unless you're in the open during impact or if you're disrupted or disordered. So if you can catch up pikes uh, in uh, rough terrain or something like that, it's a good time to go after them, or, or even in non-open terrain. Um, let's see. So basically you have a net, uh, sorry, POA differential of zero on impact, um, but you're well behind on melee at minus 100 POA. But like I said, that uh, one, that second 100 POA is is very conditional. So if you can find a way to flank them or, or catch them on, on bad ground or find some other way of disrupting them, uh, causing the cohesion level to drop, uh, then uh, it becomes a straight up uh, 100 POA versus 100 POA fight. <clears throat> uh, so so on the POA front at least, it'll be much more equal. Uh, the second thing to note about uh, pikes is that um, the deep pike keyword is based on casualties uh, unlike impact foot so pikes their second plus 100 uh, both in melee and on impact uh, depends on this fourth row of figures um, it's essentially linear linear uh, linear formula or linear relationship uh, the more casualties you take along the back row of course the back row is the first to be depleted as casualties uh, cas casualties mount uh, the deep pike uh, keyword will correspondingly grant less than 100 so if if you've lost half the men exactly half the men in the pa uh, back rank uh, deep pikes will only give you plus 50 so in melee the poa differential may be different depending on actually on impact as well since uh, deep pikes is is also an impact keyword so uh, the poa differential there uh, is dependent on casualties uh, impact foot versus light spear it's very much similar to the spearman uh, the spearman uh, comparison here impact foot will have a plus 100 poa versus light spears uh, on impact but because light spears use swordsman the swordsman keyword in melee uh, they don't have the ability like spearmen uh, they don't get the, the chance to hold and then and then grind out the uh, the impact foot in in melee uh, impact foot straight up is is a better classification or better set of unit capabilities than light spears and swordsmen unfortunately um, but uh, most light spear swordsman units are medium foot so they are they at least they can go into to, uh, rough terrain uh, just be aware irregular foot is a type of light spear unit they get no swordsman capability as backup though, so they are they are actually very 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 bad in melee, uh, in, in protracted melee fights. Heavy weapons, um, heavy weapons, 
the best way to think about them when, when looking at them from the impact foot standpoint is that they are basically spearmen uh, or, or actually more like light spears since they'll get plus 100 on both ends of uh, impact and melee but uh, things like Dacian phallaxmen and Thracians carry heavy weapons and that will negate armor so uh, be aware if you have um, you know stuff like Roman legionaries which are armored units um, that armor POA is not going to apply in uh, in melee uh, bows typically do not carry any kind of melee POA impact or, or sorry close combat uh, POA melee or otherwise uh, there we have we've got a few exceptions here immortal fires introduced Persian immortals and uh, Sparabara foot they're bowmen with 50% uh, swordsman and 50% light spear uh, 50% swordsman isn't very good. It's like 50 POA. It's exactly half. Um, on impact, though, they get the full benefit of light spear despite the fact that they're 50% light spear. I'm not sure why that is the case, uh, but mechanically, that's uh, that's how the game appears to work at, as as of right now. So it's going to be uh, impact foot's going to eat bows for breakfast. Um, let's see here, and that includes horsemen too. Although some horsemen actually retain uh, swordsman capabilities which will make their behavior uh, somewhat more like light spear cavalry impact versus light spear cavalry um, impact foot doesn't really have anything to be worried about uh, on impact it's going to be a, f uh, a 50 poa advantage for impact foot um, and if the cavalry do stick around they're going to be swordsmen uh, they're going to be equivalent uh, a, a net POA of zero with the uh, with infantry obviously usually carrying a, a combat strength modifier to, to put them over the top uh, impact foot versus lancers uh, this depends entirely on who's doing the charging if the lancers charge the impact foot uh, impact foot will do just fine it'll be it'll be uh, 100 POA versus 100 POA for lancers um, so it's a, a net POA of zero. Afterwards, they will both uh, use the swordsman uh, capability, and that's similarly 100 POA versus uh, 100 POA for again a net differential of zero. Uh, the big difference here is that impact foot, and in fact, no classification of infantry is allowed to charge lancer cavalry and retain their POAs uh, against mounted for the impact round. So we can just pull up right here, uh, impact foot, um, C plus 100 versus elephants or any mounted unless the foot are charging the mounted shock troops. Uh, you're not going to find the definition of shock troop in the game. Uh, these things, my opinion is that it should probably be listed in the unit card somewhere. But uh, just so you know, shock troops, uh, when they say mounted shock troops, that applies to lancer style cavalry and chariots, uh, heavy chariots and scythe chariots are all considered uh, mounted shock troops. So if you, uh, if, if you as a foot player charge lancer cavalry or heavy chariots, um, your impact bonuses do not apply uh, at all. Uh, and, and it creates for some awkward situations. Um, impact foot versus elephants. Um, this is going to be a rough one. Elephants will get a 150 POA advantage on you on impact. Um, and in subsequent melee, impact foot, because they use swordsmen, they actually don't get any POA at all versus elephants. And elephants will carry a 100 POA advantage on the, on the swordsmen or the impact foot, uh, which have now been turned into swordsmen because they're in melee combat. So elephants are actually really good against impact foot. Uh, for impact foot versus chariots, chariots will carry a uh, 50 POA advantage on impact. Um, in subsequent melee, it's going to be uh, 100 POA versus 100 POA. So that, that's going to be even in melee. But uh, you're slightly slight underdog uh, initially. Uh, versus Scythe Chariots, it's uh, it's worse. It's going to be 150 POA uh, combined uh, modifier against Impact Foot on 
on the impact round. In melee, um, chariots uh, chariots do okay. They're they're a hundred POA versus uh, swordsmen, so that's going to be an even fight. But that's assuming the impo impact foot managed to survive the impact round against chariots. Uh, moving on to spearmen. Spearmen um, get a hundred POA against everything unless they're disrupted or fragmented. Uh, sorry, unless they're fragmented or severely disordered. Sorry, I misspoke there. Um, we've already talked about impact foot and spearmen, but if we're talking about spearmen versus pikes, um, you spearmen are basically down uh, 100 POA. They suffer a 100 POA deficit against pikes in both impact and melee. Uh, of course, that could be less depending on casualties on, on the pike unit. There is a classification of spearmen called defensive spearmen. Right now, I only know of levy spearmen that have this capability line. Defensive spearmen is exactly the same as regular offensive spearmen, but similar to the you cannot charge rule uh, for foot versus cavalry, uh, levy or, or sorry, defensive spearmen uh, cannot charge anybody uh, and get an impact. Uh, impact POA boost. So for example, uh, levy spearman charging uh, even another uh, levy spearman unit. Uh, that levy spearman unit that's doing the attacking gets zero POA, uh, but they will get their 100 POA once melee, melee starts. Um, spearman versus light spears. Uh, this one very much is favored for the spearman. Uh, there's a, a net POA differential of zero on impact both get 100 POA and uh, so it's unlikely the spearmen are going to lose that opening round of combat and then since they're already steady and uh, most light spear units use the swordsman keyword um, the swords the, the light spears are going to be at a 50 POA deficit uh, during melee spearmen versus bows same thing uh, bows are unlikely to foot bows at least are unlikely to put up too much opposition assuming you can you can make it to them without uh, suffering a lot you know without getting disrupted by missile fire or, or, or getting routed by missile fire uh, spearmen are actually really good against um, cavalry and here's why uh, for starters they have a 50 POA boost uh, or sorry a 50 POA uh, advantage on cavalry during impact because cavalry light spears only get 50 POA um, unlike um, uh, un unlike foot light spears it's kind of uh, it's kind of weird they really should make that a separate keyword um, just so there's less confusion um, but notice how uh, mounted troops in melee um, sorry, we've selected the wrong unit. This is an Indian cavalry unit that just has no 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 melee keyword. But uh, for for Iranian armored cavalry, for example, their swordsmen, uh, mounted swordsmen have a different swordsman keyword than foot swordsmen. You'll notice that you get they get plus 100 PO against foot unless these are steady pike, offensive spearmen, or defensive spearmen, or defending an obstacle. So. What this means is, um, spearmen. If spearmen and any any kind of, kind of cavalry are fighting, light spear cavalry are fighting. The spearmen uh, have a 50 POA boost on the on the cavalry, on impact, and then they have a 100 POA boost uh, or sorry advantage, I should say, in subsequent melee rounds. Um, but usually, cavalry has a tendency to fall back out of combat. Uh, but that's uh, that's for another video. Uh, lancer units, a spearmen also do reasonably well against a lancer units because the POA differential is zero on impact, and all lancer units also carry the swordsman trait, which once again, uh, similar to uh, mount, mounted swordsmen, is once again a different keyword than regular swordsmen. So as long as the spearmen are steady, uh, or or not, and not in a disrupted or disordered state. Um, the spearmen will get 100 will get a, a 100 POA boost. Elephants spearmen are also reasonably good against elephants outside of impact. Elephants are just really scary on impact, 250 POA. Um, but once uh, they settle down, uh, once if you survive the impact round uh, of combat unscathed uh, or or with just draw, 
elephants only get 100 POA against everything else, including spears. Um, and uh, the, so it's going to be a net POA of zero. But the, once again, infantry versus you know elephants and mounted infantry will have a combat strength modifier, uh, which will push them over the top. Uh, spearmen are also <clears throat> really good against, uh, are, are very solid against chariot types since uh, chariots do not generate uh, their mounted troop bonus uh, versus steady spearmen or, or steady pikemen. Uh, in subsequent melee rounds, same thing. These heavy chariots or scythe chariot rules, they don't apply POA to spearmen or, or they don't generate uh, POAs against spearmen who are steady. So uh, spearmen, as long as they're not disrupted, uh, disrupted, they maintain a steady cohesion. Uh, they are very sturdy against cavalry, uh, all types of mounted, uh, and they're even good against elephants, assuming the elephants don't crush them on the first uh, first round of combat. Okay, we're starting to get a bit long on this video, so I'm going to cut it off here. Um, the rest of the POA differential presentation will occur on uh, part five of, uh, of this series. Uh, hope it's been helpful so far to uh, all the beginners, and uh, we'll see you in a bit. The next video shouldn't take nearly as long since I've got most of my notes organized. I just have to uh, record uh, record the, the session, obviously, and just get it uploaded. See you soon.